You're listening to the Telltale Channel. Don't forget to check me out on all social media, Patreon, Twitter, Teespring, and Etsy. All links can be found in the description or on my website, telltaleatheist.com. Hey, this is Owen. If you're comfortable, leave your first name and state at the sound of the tiny truck backing up. Hi, Owen. Uh, This is Carter from uh, Texas, and I was wondering if you had ever heard of uh, religious trauma syndrome, and if you have, what were your thoughts on it? Thank you. So a lot of people may know, I actually went to school for psychology. I haven't really talked about it in great detail. Basically, it was a two-year degree in substance abuse counseling. We talked about abnormal behavior. We talked about religious trauma syndrome and Freud and Carl Jung and a whole bunch of other stuff that's really, really interesting to me. As far as religious trauma syndrome goes, if memory serves, it's a reasonably new diagnosis. It says here, religious trauma syndrome is a function of both the chronic abuses of harmful religion and the impact of severing one's connection with one's faith and faith community. It's a huge shock to the system and one that needs to be recognized as trauma. I would say somebody like me, for example, has religious trauma syndrome because I separated myself completely from my religion and the the people in my life were part of that religion. But somebody who was just a normal Methodist, you know, standard, not really part of a cult at all, their church was pretty moderate, didn't hate anybody for anything, and they just kind of moved on with their life and went about their day-to-day business. I would say they would not be an example of religious trauma syndrome. It's a really fascinating concept, and I hope the psychology community addresses it in more detail in the coming years, because I feel like there's a lot there to be studied.